Let's solve systems of, of equations today. There are several methods to do this, and typically we'll present this in a chunk of material. And so I'd like to first discuss solving a system of equations graphically. The other two methods that you're going to see is going to be by what's called substitution, and then the third method is going to be called by elimination. Um, it's going to be your choice to decide which way you like to solve. Um, graphical means of solutions uh, are challenging in that if you draw it by hand, you might not have a good sketch of the system if you don't draw a straight line well. If you use a graphing calculator, it works very well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and solve just a system graphically, and then we'll talk about what happens when there are no solutions or many solutions to a system of equations. And the one last thing that I'd like to, to share with you, um, because I haven't spoken about this yet, is that a system of equations that we're going to study is one um, that involves two equations and two variables or two unknowns. Systems of equations come in many types. They can be three equations and three unknowns, but we are going to focus on those with two equations and two unknowns. And when we solve graphically, I'm going to choose to put those in slope-intercept form so I can use that form to graph. So this particular equation right here, I am going to take x equals 3y, and I'm going to divide both sides by 3 in order to get y alone. So what I have for that equation, once it's rearranged, is y is equal to 1 over 3, 1 third x. This being the slope of the line, and the y-intercept, because there's nothing here for b, is 0. So if I were to go and graph this line right, me, right now, I would start with this y-intercept where um, x is 0 and y is equal to 0. And the slope of the line is 1 over 3, so that is the change in y. So I go up 1 and then over 3 and I connect the dots. To help myself, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to go up 1 and over 3. I'm even going to come down 1 and to the left 3. By going down 1 and to the left 3, I've gone in the negative direction both ways, and a negative divided by a negative would be a positive one-third slope. And I really should be using a straight edge, but I, I couldn't find one this large. So this is the graph of the original equation was um, x equals 3y. I'm going to go ahead and call it y equals one-third x. Let's look at the second equation. I want to get y alone, so I'm going to add 6 to both sides of the equation, and I'll have 3y equals 2x plus 6. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 3 so that I can put this into slope-intercept form. So I have 2 thirds x plus 2. So my y-intercept is a positive 2 right here. And my slope is a positive 2 over a positive 3, so I'm going to go up 2 and to the right 3. I might go again, up 2 and to the right 3. Um, it looks like these lines are going to intersect down over here somewhere, so I'm going to go down 2 and to the left 3. And I'm going to go down 2 and to the left 3 so that I can see where the graphs of these two lines intersect. Again, this was the equation y equals 2 thirds x plus 2. And it looks like those two linear equations intersect at the point where x is a negative 6 and y is a negative 2. And the last thing I really should do when I solve a system of equations is to take those two values, x is a negative 6 and y is a negative 2, and put it into the original system. So I'm going to go ahead and take a minute now here to re erase this. This was x equals 3y, that was the original equation, and here's the original equation for the second one in the system. And I'm going to plug these values in. So when x is a negative 6 and y is this negative 2, I just want to know if this negative 6 equals that negative 6 if I get a true statement, and it does. And then I must check it in the second equation as well. Please be careful. This is y and y is a negative 2 in my solution. I'll bring down this minus 6. On the right side, I have 2 times x, and x in my solution is a negative 6. Order of operations says to multiply here. Oops. 
and then a negative 6 minus 6 is indeed a negative 12. And I have found that the solutions for x and y check in both of these equations. So when you solve a system of equations, you can know how you've done if you take your solution and put it back into the original equation, uh, system of equations, both equations. There's one thing that, uh, one other, couple of other things that could happen when solving graphically, and I'm not going to share an example with you, a couple of examples. I'm just going to draw on the rectangular coordinate system what could happen if you had a system of equations where the graphs of those two lines had the same slope. I'm just going to go ahead and pick uh, a uh, y-intercept of this, and let's just use one-third again. So let's say I had this line right here whose slope is one-third, and then I had another linear equation in the system whose y-intercept was a negative one, but its slope was also one-third. And so this would kind of be um, what the graphs of those two equations would look like. When the two lines are parallel to one another and they never intersect, then there's no solution to that system. And you need to tell me that. The one other possibility is that the two equations in the system, in the uh, system of equations, lie on top of one another. One equation is a duplicate of another, and I'll just erase one of these to share with you. So let's say this was one of the equations, and you went ahead and graphed the other one, and lo and behold, it ended up being the same line. That particular situation, I better get this off of here, that particular situation where they end up being the identical same equation, but you can't tell when you initially look at it, has an infinite number of solutions. So just watch, um, I better put a number here, um, just watch when uh, solving a system of equations, you're either going to find that they intersect and you have an ordered pair as the solution, a value for x and y, or you're going to have two parallel lines that do not intersect and there is no solution, or finally you're going to have this last situation where the two lines are identical, they don't appear to be that way at first, but once you graph them they are and there's an infinite number of solutions.